Konnichiwa. Welcome to the Jandals in Japan podcast. What's that, Catherine? You really want a flat white? Yes, I really want a flat white. Why do I want that when I'm not supposed to be having dairy? I'm thinking no, about New Zealand so much. <laughs> That's why. Because we're about to introduce you an amazing episode, um, but we'll get into that in a moment. However, it's springtime in Japan. It is. It's been a bit of a weird spring, though. It's been freezing cold. The whole Sakura forecast has been thrown off kilter. Yes. It, we're not seeing anything here yet no. at this time of recording here. It in was Fukushima. a long, long time to get the Sakura to come out. It took a long time. A long, Are long they time. Out? Well, as we record this, they're not. <laughs> what? It's supposed but, to be finished by now. <laughs> no, it's end of March and it's still mm. not really showing um, big signs. But I think uh, by the time this episode comes out, they will be mm. in bloom. So that, that's also quite good for people who had planned to come in April. Yeah, well, we are having an entrance ceremony for one of my children this year. And so here where I live further north, on a good year, you will get the sakura at the time of the entrance ceremony. Mm. Perfect so timing. We are crossing all the fingers and toes for, yeah, the little bit more delayed for the entrance ceremony day. Then we can have a special photo with some cherry blossoms, which is a bit different to the rest of Japan, where you sort of associate them more with the graduation ceremony held at, towards the end of March. But anyway, because it always used to be that, didn't it? There was April was when the new term start, when people went to the office, the first job, their first mm, working in the company, and it was always office, sakura, yeah. mm -hmm. tree blossoms, and then it sort of slid into March. But you might be lucky this year. Yes, I think we might be. Exactly. Well, yeah. in this episode coming up, I we do talk a little bit about flat whites, or at least coffee combinations and collaborations. Uh, and you have to listen to the whole episode to get to that part of it where we talk about that. But today we do welcome Takayuki Ichikawa, and he is the representative director of Canine Natural, which is a premium New Zealand pet food brand that have been in Japan, well, for more than 10 years. Uh, they have a shop in Shibuya. You can go there. They also do food tastings for the pet food in different areas we, we discovered. Mm. But it was a really great show because Canine Natural is quite unique in the market amongst Japanese pet food brands that you see out mm. there because it's all made from fresh New Zealand grass-fed, free-range meats, cage-free chicken, and sustainably sourced fish. And so, of course, it's nourishing and delicious for our dogs that Yay. are just so populous in Japan. So mm. we had a great time speaking with him. I hope that you get some really good tips out of it. We really had a fun time. Thank you so much, mm. Ichikawa-san, for this. Yeah, let's hear it from Takayuki. Kia ora, Takayuki. Welcome to the Jandals in Japan podcast. Great to have you on the show today. Thank you. So we like to start off with a warm-up question. Mm -hmm. Our question for today is, what's a pet or dog trend that you are seeing around Tokyo right now? Well, the uh, humanization trend for pet is that I have seen a lot recently. Mm. Yeah, people, you know, treat their pets as a valued member of the family. That's, I think, a very important one, which I have not seen in Japan in the past. Mm. So what does that look like that you're seeing? You know, how does that show up around you in Tokyo? Well, the uh, as you know, that I work for the uh, pet food company. And the, uh, a lot of Japanese people uh, premiumize their, their food because they really care about the health of the pets. Wow. So that's one of the proof. Mm -hmm. And also the, uh, I also, I'm also a dog owner and I really love dog. I sleep with my dog every night. Oh, on wow. The bed. <laughs> my dog is actually big, 20, 25 kilograms. It's one of the, my family. Yeah, yeah. And what kind of dog do you have? Golden Doodle. It's a mixed breed between the Golden Retriever and uh, standard poodle. 
Gorgeous, I'm sure. We'll have to swap dog photos later. I have a miniature schnauzer and he is also oh. a very valued member of our family. Yes. Yeah. How about you, Catherine? Any pet trends or dog trends you're seeing around Tokyo? Well, I think these days it seems that there's many more apartments and apartment buildings that are letting people come in with pets. Before it seemed that it was no pets, no pets, no, no, no. On the description of the apartment when they were letting the building or the the room out, but now it seems that many more places are pets okay. Mm. So I think that shows that kind of trend towards they're a member of our family. So why would we not have them also come and stay with us? I'm noticing that a lot, mm. uh, and people are finding it easier. I think to find an apartment because they know they can bring their dog or their, their cat or their other pet. I, I think, I don't know if snakes are okay, but I think dogs and cats are okay. <laughs> Jane, you've been in Tokyo a little recently. How about you? Have you seen anything around town that you've well, noticed? Well, yeah, obviously I live in Fukushima. So the daily life of a pet in Fukushima is quite different to the daily life of a pet in Tokyo. I feel there's no public transportation, mm. you know, going in little baskets or anything like that. I just put my dog in my car if we're going somewhere together. Mm. So I always notice that, you know, sometimes someone will have a bag and there will be a small dog in the bag or a cat or a rabbit or something in there and they're going somewhere together on an outing. And I think that's very sweet that, there are more pets being included in daily life. As you said, this humanization, they're a valued member of the family. And I would love to see more uh, pet friendly cafes and restaurants in mm. Japan because I have lived in Europe as well, where you would go anywhere. You see pets everywhere. They're, they don't need to be in a special crate on the train. They're just on the train with you, you know, mm. and everyone's very well adjusted. And, um, you know, the dogs are very happy and calm. So, yeah, I would love to see more of that in Japan in the near future. Sure. Mm. We know that Iki Cafe, which is has been one of our guests in the past, they're a New Zealand cafe uh, in Tokyo. They have a lot of pet friendly. They like do. Dogs, dogs they are do. okay. You can bring them to the to Have the you restaurant. been there? Iki have Cafe? You, have you been there, Takayuki, to Iki? No, unfortunately, yeah. no. So please take your go. dog there for a visit. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Where's yeah. Uh, lo base and located? In Kiyosumi Tokyo? Shirakawa, is that? Ah, that is? Okay. Yeah. A little bit yeah. out of town, but yeah, yeah, it's a good, very nice location. Yeah. Mm. Mm. If you have a vehicle, you can probably take your 25 kilogram doggy and go there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Takayuki, it was really lovely to meet you at the ANZCCJ Shininkai earlier in the year, obviously mm -hmm. in January. So happy that we could have the help of Zia at NZTE to bring you on the show today to talk more about K9 Natural where you're working as a representative director. We're so happy to have you. You've got a really big uh, background in F&B, working for big brand names, Johnson & Johnson, Coca-Cola, uh, Godiva, Nestle, all kinds of brands. And we're just really looking forward to diving into the pet environment in Japan because we haven't had anyone like you before speak on the show. So welcome mm -hmm. again. Thank you. Thank you. So. We've given a little bit of a short summary there about your background, but tell us a bit more in your words about your your background and what led you to say yes to K9 Natural to come and work with them. Well, the uh, first of all, the uh, as I briefly mentioned earlier, the uh, first one is because I'm a dog owner. We did love dogs. That's important to work for the uh, pet food, you know, company. And the second is the more professional about the, uh, I thought my work experience and the skewed to a affordable premium consumer goods segment like a Nespresso, Godiva, and Moe Hennessy Diageo. That would be a good fit with the K9 Natural because K9 Natural is the established unique position in this market as affordable premium pet food brand. I know we talked at the very beginning there, the things that we see in Tokyo as a trend, but are there some differences, do you think, between the way that pets are owned in, say, New Zealand compared to Japan? Is there something different there? Have you heard? My colleagues in New Zealand told me that the 
big difference is the size of the breeds. Oh, yes, true. You know, mm. Actually, the uh, top three the, uh, breeds in Japan is Toy Poodle, Chihuahua, and uh, Miniature Shiba Schnauzer. Inu. No, <laughs> Shiba. Oh, Shiba. No, Shiba. Oh, Shiba. Shiba. Shiba, yes, yes, Shiba. very popular. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Only these three actually breeds represent 40% of the all breeds in Japan. Wow. wow. That's amazing. Mm. Mm -hmm. So it skewed is. to uh, smaller breeds. Wow. My neighbor has a, two spits. I see them going out for walks. And there's also a neighbor who has a St. Bernard, which is huge <laughs> and obviously captures the neighborhood. Everyone sort of looks at this dog all the time. But yeah, that's very interesting. The size of the breeds, that's the difference. I think New Zealand, they probably have a lot of larger uh, golden retrievers, uh, labs. Mm -hmm. Dalmatians, all kinds of different breeds, but probably bigger ones. Yeah, mm -hmm, definitely. I also wanted to have a black Labrador when I was deciding what kind of dog to get. And my husband said, this is Japan. No, too big. Everything's <laughs> big. Food is big. Poop is big. Yes, no. <laughs> so we settled on a miniature schnauzer instead, and it is a good size, I have to say. Yeah, it's ah, the size for the house and the yes, area, right? And I think, house and, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah, New Zealand has more open spaces, perhaps, and yeah, so it's more easier. Yeah, living yeah. space in Japan, yes. Uh, so what's it like for pet ownership in Japan? How many people, how many households have pets? I've heard it's more than children these days, but is that true? <laughs> what's the situation? Give us some no. maybe statistics. Tell us what you think. Well, in Japan, if I remember correctly, uh, seven, eight million for dog and also cat. And the population of the uh, num uh, of the dog kept at the home in Japan is a downward trend. Downward. Yeah. Mm. And the uh, while the cat is a stable. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. I would have thought that uh, the trend for dog ownership at home would be increasing. Because I think the uh, because the uh, shifts in pet owner demographics, the uh, more aging population actually increasing number of their income and single person households. So the uh, you know to have a dog at your home is the uh, you need it requires greater time and effort in terms of the care, such as the need for daily works, and with cats therefore you know, more suitable by uh, many Japanese owners uh, due to their busy lifestyles. That is a thing, right? I mean, if you've got a family, you can, your family member can often look after the pet, take it for walks, for example, if it's a dog. But if you are by yourself, it is harder to mm. have that. There are people who do the walking, uh, so it's possible. But that's a really good yeah. point that you bring mm. up. Yeah. And you talked a little bit at the beginning there about dogs pets being part of the family and mm -hmm. humanization mm -hmm. so i think that leads to the things that we give to the pet to eat right to dogs to eat so their pet food is obviously full of more maybe nutrition mm -hmm. tell us a bit more about canine because we hear it's made of lovely new zealand natural ingredients so i think it'd be good to know a bit more about the product that you're selling uh, first of all, Canine is, I would say, it's a very unique brand. Yeah, we actually entered in this market in 2010, 14 years ago. And at that time, the no freeze-dried product is available. And the uh, people actually were satisfied with the kind of mainstream dry food, dry pet food. But ours are uh, different, as I mentioned, first uh, Production method is a freeze dry, which is new to this market. And also, our products have a higher protein, high meat. 90% of the, our, you know, the ingredients are from meat. Wow. Fish or the yeah, ram, chicken, whatever. It's ninety more than 90% all of our products. That is completely different from the uh, mainstream dry food product. Which is how, yeah, tell us about the protein content of those ones because I feel it's very low, right? Yeah. Is it 
Do you know the percentage of a mainstream product protein? Uh, I would say 40. Yeah. Less than, on less average, than half, right? Yeah. Yeah, less than half. Mm -hmm. So very unique position. And also the uh, our ingredients, all of them, are sourced from New Zealand. You know, as very well known as the uh, advanced agriculture country. No uh, uh, BSO, BSA, whatever, how do you call ah, it? Ah, mad cow disease. Yeah, yeah, that kind mm. of thing, yes. So, you, yeah, that's it. Never, never happened in New Zealand. Mm. So very yeah. safety and the uh, management of the the animals the, uh, mm. is very strict. So basically, NI was the, uh, kind of new for the most of the Japanese pet owners. Wow, this is different. Yeah, so tell us about that entering into the Japan market. You weren't around that 14 years ago mm -hmm. in 2010, but do you know what inspired K9 to think we're going to go into Japanese market? What led them to come here? Was it seen as quite different compared to the dry food, pet food market? Obviously, I was not here the 14 years ago, So, but yeah, please let me try to answer your question. The first of all, the uh, market size of the pet food market in Japan is reasonably big, I would say. The, uh, it's estimated at, if I remember correctly, 4,000 million US dollar in total. And the, uh, thanks to the humanization and the premiumization trend for pet we have seen so far, market is expected to grow steadily in value as 2% GAGR. So with our unique free stride products, we believe that the, we can capture that opportunity. Wow. That's why the event. Yeah, amazing. I Ooh. think, I think yeah. the uh, reason to enter the Japan market. And so what are some of the strategies that they've used so far to be successful in Japan? Actually, unlike the uh, most of the uh, mainstream or big, you know, the uh, international brands, we actually have not spent so much money on typical advertising and price promotions for marketing of our brand and the products. Actually, we have not done so much price promotion, price discount. And basically, our main focus has been always to build our brand ambassadors in user level, trade level, and vets. I believe that's the key success factor so far, which is completely different from what the most of the international brands have taken. What's a brand ambassador then for your product? Is that a a person of some sort or a dog no, of some can, sort? Yeah, can my dog be a brand ambassador? <laughs> <laughs> no, I call the ambassador, but the basically it's the uh, our fans in our community. We tried to build a kind of fan community and they drive word of mouth to the prospect pet owners. Hey, this is, I tried this product and this is really good. That kind of natural social diffusion we try to drive, that's our strategy. Wow, because you have a shop, don't you, in Jingu Mai, I think, in yes. Shibuya. Yeah, do, yeah. do people come to that shop or is that really just a location for you and then you're building the community outside of the shop? Yeah, shop is the, uh, yeah, just one shop in the uh, central Tokyo, the uh, Jingu Mai, it's, which does not impact in scale, but it's a kind of center of the, uh, you know, the community, of course. But yeah, uh, every weekend, our sales guys visit the retailers nationwide and organize a kind, kind of sampling trial event there. So from Hokkaido to uh, Kyushu, the every weekend. So the, also we will participate in the coming Interpets event in Tokyo, which will be held from the April 4th to 7th. So very big events for pet owners. And last year, that event welcomed more than 60,000 pet owners in four days. So wow. taking that kind of opportunity, we try to communicate what K9 Natural is different from the other you know, brands. Yeah. I love that you are building a community. 
It Thank just you. makes such a difference. And, you know, even through our podcast here, we have created what we call the Jandals community. And you are now one of those Jandals <laughs> because you're on this show. Yeah. But it just expands out of there. And people refer to others about uh, guests who have been on the show and their products. And mm -hmm. we hope that happens for you too. Uh, but it wasn't our main aim, but it just happened. And maybe with K9 Natural, as people bought it, they talked about it to other people. And yes. word of mouth is so powerful in Japan, isn't it? Yes. I've never seen this level of the word of, the quality of the word of mouth in wow. my uh, career in the past. So it's amazing. That's really interesting. I wonder if that could work for other products or it's something special <laughs> about your product because it is freeze-dried, it's different, it's full of nutrition, 90% mm -hmm. meat, right, protein, and... Yep. Maybe that's just the, the difference, the differentiator that makes it a great place for community yes. to do the word of mouth. Amazing. Yep. So can you share any interesting or funny incidents you've experienced during establishing your business in Japan? Well, uh, it's still one year the, uh, since Only I joined this company. Wow. Yeah. So uh, not so memorable incident so far. So far, so good. Yeah, so far, so good. Yes, I'm wondering: I'm really are you enjoying. notice? Are you noticing anything about working with a New Zealand company? So you've worked mm -hmm. with many international brands. You mm -hmm. said before: is there something you've noticed about your coworkers in New Zealand, and maybe it's a challenge or interesting thing that you noticed about working with them? Because I I hear a lot from. Japanese people, they want to know how to work with New Zealanders better, mm -hmm. right? Or New Zealand people want to know how to work with Japanese people better. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I think not only for New Zealand the uh, company, but it's the same for the uh, all of the international companies. The, in Japan, it's so unique. I mean, uh, small things matter. You know, in this market to justify, if you really want to justify the premium price and high quality, small things matter. For example, if our product package is uh, damaged very little bit, but uh, in Japan, they are not acceptable. So the, uh, with uh, K9 Natural in New Zealand, we have been making the best effort with the team in New Zealand to meet the high quality standard among the uh, Japanese customers. So that's the uh, one, the example, but the, uh, the point is small things matter in this mm -hmm. market. Yeah, that's a good point. And so for example, packaging in New Zealand, we are often more worried about environmental damage mm -hmm. or maybe easy to dispose of, mm -hmm. but in Japan, you no, know, you need to focus on bringing the perfect package to your customer. Yeah. Package first. presentation, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Did you have important. to make those packages different for the Japan market then compared to say how they are produced in New Zealand or is it basically the same package but you just got to make sure it's perfect quality when it leaves New Zealand and arrives in Japan? Uh, we use the uh, same packaging but right. the, uh, yeah, you know, quality control, we push the New Zealand team in New Zealand to right. improve. What else would you say to others? maybe New Zealanders who are coming into Japan, you mentioned that the small things matter. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else, other advice you would give to other New Zealand businesses who want to enter the Japanese market? Well, there are several things. Before making a decision to enter this market, first of all, I would suggest assessing if your business is differentiating enough to attract the Japanese customers who are really matured already and uh, satisfied with uh, existing products and services offered by the existing players in Japan. That's, I think, very important. Even if you are a giant, let's say in US or the Europe market, Japan is different. So the uh, a lot of the local smart local players uh, here so if your business or services are differentiating enough, yes, it's easy to enter. That's a point number one. And 
maybe point number two would be the、uh, partnership. If you really identify the、uh, right partners in Japan for your business model. For example, the we and the Canine Natural Japan doesn't have a direct relationship with the、uh, well known top famous retailers. We don't have. We have, of course, more deeper relationship with other, actually, the retailers or the partners. Who are really supportive and who knows our business model very well. That's very important, I think. So, point number two would be、uh, identify right partners and work with them. And the third point is、uh, as I briefly mentioned, this market is so matured. So, the, if you don't have the long term commitment, it's、uh, very difficult. It's not yet easy to win market. Quick win market. So I think it requires kind of mid term, long term commitment in this market. Wow,、you、great point. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, be a smart local player. Honestly, <laughs> that's so true. And find the right partners here. And it's a long term game, right? It's a matured market. I like that you pulled that out because it certainly is. And we've, we've had other speakers and guests talk about be here for the long term.、Mm -hmm. Yeah. But your connection between you know, the small things matter、mm -hmm. links to that second one,、mm -hmm. right? It's not only big retailers or big,、yep. it's coming、yep. smaller. Yeah, you're right. Right? So you're dealing more with a smaller retailer and connecting with them, and they are your fans as well, right? They、yes. want to sell your product. Yes. The,、uh, our products are very premium, categorized in the premium category. And the,、uh, actually, we are still niche the,、uh, compared to the mainstream market. So we don't need to,、uh, you know, to win in that the,、uh, standard battlefield. Right. We need to define the,、uh, our new, battlefield. New ba mm. Your battlefield, yeah.、Yes. Create your you, own pie, yeah. How, do you, how、mm. do you do that? And how do you build that trust and the relationships with those smaller people in the battlefield? Right. How are you doing that? What strategies work really well from your, from your opinion? Well, again, the first is step is to identify who should be the,、uh, you know, the right partner for our business. And the,、uh, we identify these specialty stores, the、uh, vets, and the wholesalers who are specialized in premium segment. And we tried to build a relationship. As I briefly mentioned, we send the, our people for their sampling events on the weekend. We you know, go out for market with the sales force from the wholesalers. And we visit the vet and organize a kind of a seminar you know, to let them understand deeper about the, our brand and the product. That kind of initiatives to Build a relationship with the ideal and the right partner is very important. Yeah, I'm trying to imagine your tasting events because it's the dogs who are tasting it, not the humans, right? <laughs> <Yes> . So, <laughs> so do, you, do you have them at the, the veterinarian clinic, for example, or at the specialty shops on the weekends? You have people handing out. Yeah,、some? in most of the cases, the,、uh, we do. The、uh, sampling event at the dog shows on the weekend or the key detailers, yes, key detailers in Tokyo and、uh, yeah, actually nationwide. It must be fascinating though to watch the dogs go for the food and、yes. be really enjoying it and, and the dog owner's reaction to that maybe as well.、It、must be interesting. Yes, so the,、uh, we are confident when we feed the, our product to the dog as a trial, their reaction would be amazing. Unlike the the owner, human, human、yeah. beings, when we taste food, you don't know whether they're going to like it or not, but you're、yeah. confident they will, the dogs. Wow. Dogs don't lie, do they? Or <laughs> say, or is she when it's not? Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mm. How mm. do you know if a dog likes the food? Does it yeah, have the reaction?、Like? Is it a reaction of the tail wagging or they、But、eat the whole lot? How do you if, know if they like it? If you feed the, if you feed the not good the food to the dog, they don't eat. The very simple reaction from them. 
But the, uh, in most of the case, when we feed the, our product to dogs, dogs are trying to asking, looks asking more. Where's my food? Yeah. Give me more. <laughs> yeah, that's a very simple reaction. The, uh, the pet owners can recognize, oh, the, uh, normally uh, this dog, this guy, and this, uh, my dog doesn't eat the food, the, uh, you know, provided by some, the, uh, someone, but wow. So that's really interesting. I, I wonder if you've got, out of the things that you've told us already, the, that small things matter and the three tips you gave us, already is there one thing that you think is the most important for everybody to be taking into account like for new zealanders for example coming into japan is there one thing that you would say is the most important thing to be aware about for a successful strategy the biggest one is the uh, differentiating or not that's right. yeah, mm. i think very important for especially mm -hmm. entering the matured market like japan mm. Yeah, I think especially New Zealanders coming here would be very shocked to see exactly how many pet food brands there are here in Japan. There's so many. We only have a few in New Zealand in comparison, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any opportunities you are seeing or untapped markets or new products that could be brought to Japan? Any any ideas you want to share? And you said maybe you've got some secret ideas you don't want to share, but <laughs> <laughs> you mean in the pet food market? It could or... be pet food, or it could be in general. Any any trends that you see in Japan? Well, the uh, two points in the pet food market. The uh, I think in cat pet food, I have not seen the uh, significant premiumization trend in the cat food market. So the uh, we are trying to tap, you know, the uh, capture that opportunity in the future. That's one thing. And outside the uh, pet food market, I would say is the awareness toward the uh, New Zealand is still low. We know the uh, name of New Zealand, location of the country, but we actually don't know so much. Japanese don't know so much about the. Uh, you know, the, mm, the details, right? Yeah, the, the, mm. the details, you know, how the New Zealand product, the brand looks like and the uh, how the life in New Zealand, we, we actually, we can imagine, but the, uh, we actually, we don't know so much about the uh, daily life in New Zealand. When I visit the New Zealand, amazing nature, you know, that kind of the uh, promotions of New Zealand, nature and the food there, rum, you know, beautiful rum, the chicken. I think there is a loom uh, to promote the food and nature in New Zealand, in Japan market. Mm -hmm. Since I think New Zealand people feel like we talk about New Zealand all the time, so surely everybody knows now. Mm -hmm. Surely we've talked enough, but you've told us that actually, no, not there's enough, more, yeah, not enough. we can do and more. And also, the, uh, interestingly, I, when I visited New Zealand, Flat White, mm. I, I knew the name because I worked for Nespresso. They are, they are my colleagues from Australia or New Zealand always said that the Flat White, Flat White every time. <laughs> yes, we like But I didn't white, know what we? was it, Yeah, it was, but yeah. the... Uh, it was the first time to try flat white in New Zealand. Amazing. Mm. That's yeah, different from the uh, cafe latte or, you know, cappuccino. Mm. It's different drink, coffee drink. Maybe at your, coffee, at your dog show, tasting events, you could have someone come along flat and white. serve flat whites <laughs> and yeah. have a collaboration of coffee, flat whites times. With yeah. Icky. Yeah. Icky. Yeah. Yeah. Have a collaboration. Yeah. We just said it there. We've had an amazing time today. Thank you so much for, you are now a successful Jandal in Japan. Mm -hmm. We really appreciate you pushing and loving and being very devoted to the pet food market for dogs in Japan. And thank you very much for being devoted and doing that and sharing your story with us today. My pleasure. Thank you. run out and buy some canine dog food right now. I think you should be. 
I don't know what you're having now in your cabinet there for your little dog, but I wonder. Mm, yeah, well, that's why I asked it. about the general dog food protein percentage because I knew it was pretty low. But wow. yeah, I imagined it's under fifty percent. That just 50%. makes so mm. much sense, doesn't it? Whatever you put into your human body reflects on the outside. So won't it also be the same for our dear pets, for mm -hmm. dogs too? Mm -hmm. It must affect their the shine on the coat. Everything, eyesight, the way they walk, all kinds of things. Mm. Yeah. Yep, I'm sure it does. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's fantastic. We have access to such a high quality dog food now in Japan for all those dog owners and hopefully in the future cat owners, right? Yeah, go premium. Sounds like mm. that's the thing to do. It was amazing that statistic on the high percentage of protein. I, I was taken away by that. I also mm. loved how they, they've really gone purposefully into building a community and have that fan base who mm. share stories. That's just so cool. That's what you'd really want for every brand to be able to have. That is not have to focus on the marketing and advertising, but just build mm. it through word mm -hmm. of mouth. Brilliant. Yeah, not, not and not aiming for those big retailers, right? Just saying, no, mm. we are going to go specialized. And yeah, people who care about their dogs tend to have trusted places where they will get their dog either groomed or buy dog clothes for them. That's another thing that happens in Japan, yeah, right? True. Dressing the dog up. All of there's a lot of those stores around, so it's a great market to to enter instead of trying to be found on the shelf in the. Have you ever been to Don Quixote to the pet food section? It's it's just I haven't to there, crazy. but I have been to some of those, what is it called? The home center places. Mm -hmm, and they mm -hmm. have similar aisles yeah. of dog food. Yeah, aisles and, and food aisles and pet stuff. food. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And didn't you like his three tips for us? Mm, very well Brilliant. prepared. Thank you so much. Loved that he came very prepared. Thought about it, obviously, but being smart as a local player, I thought was pretty sort, sort of awesome. And also finding those right partners in market mm -hmm. and working obviously with places like NZTE or people who are here who have the knowledge to be able to find the partner for you or help you f go to the place where you would find that person or that organization is really important. And just, again, that staying here mm -hmm. long term, it's so not a quick win market. It's definitely something that's mm -hmm. more deep rooted. Yeah. Yeah. Even for dog food. <laughs> We're hearing it across all the markets, aren't we? Yeah. Well, I'd love to yeah. go to one of the dog shows and see the dogs going for the food and just, just see that whole atmosphere. It must be so much fun, especially for Takayuki, who's just such a dog lover. He must mm. love that kind of experience yeah. too, it's going out fun. and doing that. It must make a fun job for him. Mm. Wow, that was excellent. Yes, thank you, Takayuki. And yeah, I hope to see much more canine dog food being consumed here in Japan. We'll see you again soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Make sure you check out our guests' links in the show notes. This podcast is brought to you today by Catherine O'Connell Law and Pod Launch with Jane. If you have a great story you think should be on the show, come and find us on LinkedIn or Instagram. We'd love to hear from you. See you next time. Mata ne!